And away we go on the third and final part of domain and range. Let's name the family of functions. Do you represent, see that f of x is simply a polynomial function. Its degree is to, uh, x to the fifth power. Its degree is five. So this is specifically a quintic function. But more generally, it's a polynomial function. Either answer would be appropriate. On g of x, do you see that it's also a polynomial function, but this would just be because it's x minus 3 squared. It's just a quadratic function. But again, more generally, it is part of the polynomial family of functions. Now, h of x is a simple cube root function that I've, I've done some transformations on. But nothing fancy going here with the family of functions. k of x is exponential because the variable is in the exponent. And again, I've done some transformations on it. But it's still the basic family of functions is exponential. Now, when you're looking at domain, what you're looking at is what x, x's can you plug in? So you might ask yourself, can you, are you allowed to plug in x equals 0? Are you allowed to plug in negative x's? Can you plug in positive x's? Are there any x's specifically you have to avoid so the denominator does not go to 0? Could you plug in fractions? Could you plug in radicals? Could you plug in decimals? Well, anything can be plugged in to any polynomial function. No matter what kind of x I plug in, I can take it to the fifth power or the fourth power or the third power and so on, and then add and subtract and multiply those values. So the domain is all real numbers. I'm going to do domains first, then go back and do ranges. Well, the same thing is true. Any x value I want to, I could take it, subtract 3, get that answer, and then square it, get that answer, and then add 7. There's nothing that I need to be careful about. Now, with radical functions, you have to be careful with your square root and your fourth root and any even root functions. But with cube roots, what you might automatically wonder is, can you take the cube root of a negative? Well, yes, you can. Because consider that the cube root of negative 8 is negative 2. So taking the cube roots of negatives is an issue. You can take the cube root of 0, you still get 0. Well, could you take the cube root of other radicals? Consider that you can do like the cube root of a square root of something, like a 5. That just gives you the sixth root of 5. You can do cube roots of fractions, cube roots of decimals. So those are all just examples to show you you can take the cube root of any number you want to. So the domain here is all real numbers. The same is true with exponentials. So can you use 0 as an exponent? Well, sure. Like I could say 4 to the 0 power. That's going to be 1. Can you do 4 to negative exponents? Well, sure. 4 to the negative third, for instance, is 1 over 4 cubed. So 1 64th, that's doable. What about fractions? Why, sure. You can do like 4 to the 1 half power. That's just the square root of 4. Well, can you do um, radicals in the exponents? Sure. 4 to the square root of 5 is doable. If you put it on your calculator, you're going to get an answer. So you can use any type of x you want to in an exponent. So k of x has a domain of all real numbers. Guys, what I'm trying to show you here is any polynomial function like the top two, any cube root, fifth root, seventh root function like h of x, and any exponential function like k of x, they all have domains that are all real numbers. They've got simple domains. Um, so you want to you keep it simple when you can. Now the range you need to think about, but I'm only going to ask you the range of an equation that I know you can sketch super quickly. So f of x, if it's quintic, I know it's going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in general. I don't need to place it specifically on the x-axis or anything else to see that it stretches forever downward and upward, so its range is all real numbers. Now with g of x, 
I know it's a parabola that's right side up, so I can see that its domain is not all real numbers. Not its domain, but its range. Its range is going to go from its minimum value upward. So right quick, I need to go, wait a minute. When I graph this thing, I can see that it's right 3. Whoops. Right 3, up 7, not down 7. Let me erase this real fast and make it correct. So if this thing goes right 3, up 7, and then I make it right side up from there, then I can see that its range goes from a low y value of 7 upward. So make sure you name the y value. So with parabolas and absolute value graphs that have a definite vertex, you just need to sketch them. You need to find their vertex and then go up from the vertex or go from, um, up to the vertex if they're upside down. Now cube root functions I can also do because remember y equals the cube root of x looks like this, kind of like a square root function with the other side. So I can see that on this one, I've moved it left 6, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and then I've made it taller than normal, so it might look like this, but I can still tell that its arrows point forever downward and upward, so its range is still all real numbers. So I'm only giving you ones that I know that you could get a quick visual image of, you know, and you can tell the, an easy range. Now remember, let me erase what I've got here to make room. Remember that your parent function here is y equals 4 to the x. Exponential growth looks like this. Well, if I say, well, what, what happens when you do y equals negative 4 to the x? Well, that's a vertical reflection, so it flips over the x-axis. Then I'm going to say, well, how do you deal with y equals negative 4 to the x plus 2? The x plus 2 part takes this graph and moves it left 2. So it comes over and it looks more like that. Now, what's the minus 1 do? It moves the whole graph down 1. So when I go through a series of baby steps to graph this, instead of being right underneath the horizontal asymptote, which was overlapping the x-axis, now the horizontal asymptote moves down 1. So your y-intercept, which was just at 0, negative 1, then I moved it to negative 2, negative 1. Now it's going to move to negative 2, negative 2. So I can see that its range goes from negative infinity up to its horizontal asymptote. So again, most equations I'm only concerned with domain, but there are a few that you can quickly sketch, and so I could also reasonably ask you range. Now, all of these have more difficult domains to assess, so that's why they're on one page together. So on this first one, I want you to say, this is, by the way, a rational function. Rational means fractional in a math class. And the fraction must contain x's in the denominator and not just, not just fractional coefficients. Um, Q of x is a, a combination of functions, so I'm not going to name it. S of x I also see as rational. And of course, r of x is pretty obviously a logarithmic function. The log in the uh, equation might just give that away, huh? So these are very straightforward on what you do. And you need to recognize, OK, this is the idea. This is how I'd put the idea into algebraic terms. And this is how I answer the domain. So with rational functions, all rational functions, so with both of these as well as any others that might appear in the homework or whatever. You're going to say, I know that I cannot have zero in the denominator. So how about we state it this way, just in a real informal sense, the bottom can't be zero. And that's the same idea that's going to guide our work on both of these. So if you can solidify 
the idea, then you can figure out algebraically what's that mean you actually write down. So now algebraically, if the bottom can't be zero, you're going to say the bottom cannot be zero, or the bottom cannot be zero. So you're going to deal with those similarly. Well, then you solve it like it's an equation, but you just keep um, recopying the cannot equal to. So I look at this and say, well, this puppy factors. Oh, and when I solve it, I'm saying x cannot be 3 or negative 2. Now I have to think about, well, what's that look like? And it's going to give you two ways to write the domain. If I looked graphically at what this looks like, it just means that on the number line, you've got negative 2 and 3. And I'm saying that you cannot use negative 2, you cannot use 3, so you bubble wrap them. But what that means is that you can use everything else. So now you've got two valid ways of writing the domain. I would probably, first of all, just say that um, x such that x cannot be negative 2 and 3. And I would just take the idea that I got in green and structure it with the right notation in black. But if you look at the number line, you could also say negative infinity to negative 2, union negative 2 to 3, union 3 to infinity. And either one's totally appropriate. Well, if I look at the second, the s of x, the second rational function, I'm trying to say, well, x squared plus 8 doesn't factor. Um, if I said x squared cannot equal negative 8, well, guys, I can't ever square something and get a negative. So the statement I've got right here is always true. So no matter what x I plug in, its, perfect, its square won't be a negative anyway. So what I'm saying is you don't have issues here. There isn't an x that would make the bottom go to 0. Therefore, the domain is all real numbers. There are no x values that should cause you concern. So I expected that one to be problematic, but then it turned out not to be. Now, whenever you have a function that has an even radical in it, so right here I have the fourth root. But if you had the square root or the sixth root or the eighth root, you would follow these same guidelines. And the idea that you want to start working with is you can't have a negative under the radical. So I'll say, you know, what's under the radical? Can't be negative. So then if I'm trying to say, well, algebraically, what is it that I do to, do, uh, to deal with that? You're going to say that means that what's under the radical, you can't say cannot be negative. That's not a notation we use. So instead, you say, what can it be? Well, if it can't be negative, you're saying it can be positive. And it also can be 0, because I could take the fourth root of 0. Oh, well, looky there. I've got a polynomial inequality. How do you do that? You factor. You identify critical values. And you do a sign chart. So even though we're using this in a place that you did not expect it, the way it works is the same as always. So I'm going to choose my test values. So you're plugging into the most simplified form of your inequality. So I'm getting negative, negative is positive. I don't know if you can hear my phone in the background. I apologize. That's annoying, I know. So I'm going to say greater than or equal to 0 means I need closed circles and positive results. So now you've done all the work. All you need to do is now structure your response for the domain. And so you do that with interval notation. You say 
that I can use any x's, negative infinity up to 0, and then any x's from 7 to infinity. So notice if you attempted to say, well, um, well I want to do, for instance, q of something between 0 and 7, so q of 4, we'll say. Well, you can do negative 3 times 4 and get negative 12. That's not your problem. But when you plug in, it's going to force you to take 4 squared is 16 minus 7 times 4 is minus 28. And that's going to be negative 12 times the fourth root of, what is that, negative 12? Well, this is non-real. And so if an x produces a non-real answer, then the x is not the domain. So this is just an example of why anything between 0 and 7 is not in the domain. Now, the last one that we'll work with is logarithms that have kind of weird domains that you need to think about. Well, I don't know if you remember this, and you're welcome to play around on your calculator with just log base 10. You could do log base 10 of 10 or log base 10 of 5. You can do log base 10 of 1. You can do log base 10 of 1 third. But you cannot do log base 10 of 0. If you don't believe me, try log base 10 of 0 on your calculator. Also try log base 10 of like negative 4 on your calculator. Well, both of those should return error messages to you. And you might say, well, Ms. Porter, this is a log base 6 problem. But all logarithms have the same domain, regardless of whether it's log base 2 or log base 10 or log base 24. They've all got the same domain. So your idea is that um, you can only take logs of positive input values. So you just have to say that I'm taking the log of x, and that's got to be positive. And that's all there is to it. Sorry, phone again. Of course, if you graph that, that would look like this. That gives you two options for writing the equation or writing the domain. You could just say x such that x is greater than 0. And again, stay, um, state your green inequality in domain format. Or you could say 0 to infinity, either one. So now we're going to have two final examples where I'm going to, I want you to think about So what do you do with u of x because you've got two issues. You've got something under a square root and you've got a denominator. So let's think about both ideas. First of all, I know that um, what's under the radical so I'll actually use the correct word here. The radicand can't be negative. The radicand must be greater than or equal to 0. And then what's on the bottom of the fraction, the denominator, cannot equal 0. So I've got two ideas that I need to algebraically deal with. So the radicand, what's under the radical, is 4x plus 12. And that can't be negative, so it's got to be either 0 or positive. So 4x has got to be greater than or equal to negative 12, or x has got to be greater than or equal to negative 3. Now, on the denominator can't be 0. That's pretty easy to set up. And I bet you can write now, without doing any work at all, see that x couldn't be 1 or negative 1. So you're not allowed, I, I won't accept you just writing all of that after curly brackets. What I want you to do instead is blend the two ideas here. So I'm expecting you to blend and then use interval notation. So you might be saying, what she mean by blend? If you'll graph it, you'll see how to make one cohesive statement that's actually more clear for your reader. So if I have negative 3, and I have negative 1 and 1, those are my, my x values that seem important. Bubble wrap negative 1 and 1, because you can't use either one of those. 
um, you've got to make sure that x is greater than or equal to positive or negative 3. So shade to the right, but you can't shade what you've bubble wrapped. Then I can see how to put it together in one cohesive statement about the domain because I can say use anything from negative 3 up to negative 1, but don't use negative 1 itself. Then use anything between negative 1 and 1, but don't use either of the endpoints. And then use anything that's larger than 1. So put the two ideas together. Now on V of X, you've again got an, a radical that's even. So you need to say that the radicand, what's under the radical, cannot be negative. So you might start out and say, okay, the radicand can't be negative, so it has to be greater than or equal to zero. This is just the idea that you've got going on in your head. But then when you say the denominator cannot be zero, well, remember, guys, if you take the square root of zero, you get zero. So now I'm going to say, well, if I put these together, then what I'm saying is that my radicand can only be positive because if it's zero, then the whole bottom is zero, and I can't allow the bottom to be zero. So now I'm ready algebraically to say this means that x cubed minus 4x squared minus 9x plus 36 has to be greater than zero. You should say, oh, she's done it again. She's given us a polynomial inequality. So I'm going to group. So I've got x squared times x minus 4 and negative 9 times x minus 4. I've got x minus 4 as my GCF. x squared minus 9 is left. I'll factor it in one step. I know I need to do a sign chart real quickly. So I'm going to choose, let's see here, negative 3 and then positive 3 and positive 4 as critical values. There we go. Definitely I'm choosing 0, 3 and a half, and then 17, negative 10. So when I look at my sign chart, negative 10 minus 4, negative 10 plus 3, negative 10 minus 3, negative result. 0 minus 4, 0 plus 3, 0 minus 3, positive result. 3.5 minus 4, 3.5 plus 3, 3.5 minus 3, negative result. 17 minus 4, 17 plus 3, 17 minus 3, positive result. I need greater than, so open circle, and positives. So now I've got a visual image of what's going on. It becomes very simple to say that my domain must be negative 3, comma 3, union 4 to infinity. You are now ready to finish A8. And I'll be here in the morning should you need to ask me extra questions.